wake and rake rake and wake wake and rake podcast time to wake and rake we got jerry harrison baby jerry harrison joining us on the show to join will middlebrooks as always danny Vietti here it's thursday april 22nd and we're getting you all hyped up for another series of dodgers padres this weekend i think we're all pumped because last weekend was absolute uh, electric factor every single game so it was a whole lot of fun first of all jerry welcome to the freaking wake and rake pod happy to have you here hey thanks for having me guys so really love what you guys are doing love the energy and i love talking baseball and for whatever reason, he's not showing his biceps in the camera. He lowered his screen a little, or he hired his screen, but his biceps are looking good. There it, there is. it is. All right, y'all. Well, for the rest of the show, I'm going to hide the mine. It's the shirt. I got the, I got the extra <laughs> medium. They got to start making those Dodger pregame shows like X-rated with those biceps or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh let, let me ask you, Jerry, first, and then we'll get on to Brooksy here. What was your biggest takeaway from that first series in San Diego? Uh, well, first and foremost, the most important thing is that the Dodgers went down there and won the series. I think it was more important uh, for the Padres to win the series because it's the first series of the year. It was at their home ballpark in San Diego. Uh, so for the Dodgers to, to get away with their uh, two wins out of the three games, you win the series, you're excited. But at the same time, you realize, you know, Dodger fans, you realize that the Padres are an up-and-coming team. They're a very good ball ball club. They throw the ball well, uh, pitch pitching side relievers, and they got some power too. So really good ball club there in San Diego, and it's going to be some exciting games in the future. Yeah, um, it had playoff feel to it. I mean, Dave Roberts said you're going to get 19, 19 World Series games from from these yeah. matchups, and, and if it, it felt like it for early in the season, not full capacity stadiums it had the intensity of a playoff game and you could feel it just watching it, whether it's them chirping and the benches clearing or whatever it may be. You could tell there's a lot of passion in those games and early in the season, middle of the season, you tend to lose a little bit of that as a player because it gets monotonous and then repetitive yeah. and you're doing the same thing every day. Right. And um, yeah, so it was good to see that passion. Now I, I want to get back into what we talked about last week a little bit. Do you consider it a rivalry yet? I, I still think it's a feud. <laughs> I'm still going to stick with feud. I don't want to go rivalry yet just because Padres got to show that they can, that they can beat them more. I mean, I, I was digging into the numbers since 2010, San Diego 71 and 131 versus LA. It's a 35% win percentage. If you want to compare that to like New York and Boston, Boston was 92 and was it 109. So a 45, it's 45% win percentage. So you get close to 50. Once it gets closer to that 45, 50 range, then we're talking – rivalry right now it's still dodger heavy and 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 to me san diego's still little brother they showed they could play with them they actually outscored them in regulation uh la had, what was it, 11 to 10 la had the one five inning uh five inning 12th inning five run 12th inning i can't speak yep. um so they they yes they lost the series but they also played with them the entire series it was fun yeah. to watch they did i like that word you use feud you know because you know when you think of rivalry it's more like a history, long right. history, over 50, 75, over 100 years. And you played with the Red Sox, so you know that Red Sox-Yankee. Now, that's a rivalry. You know, it's generational. Uh, I think that feud is, is perfect because that's what it is. The last time the Padres had a winning record in a season against the Dodgers was 2010, and, and the Harrison brothers were, were leading that Padre team over the Dodgers. So... That's the last time. That's how long it's been. But you realize as a Dodger that these, this team, the Padres, are up and coming. They're very talented. They know uh, that the Padres are gunning for them. So I love that this is where we're at, that they're trying to make it a rivalry. I think it's great for baseball, and it really kind of helps the Dodgers. And this is, this is what I mean by that. I don't think the Dodgers uh, really go aggressively after Trevor Bauer Unless, unless you know, the, the Padres did what they did, right? They went after True. Snell, yeah. Darvish. They really revamped their rotation. Uh, you saw what they were doing, and the Dodgers saying, wow, they've really kind of bolstered their team. They're really coming after us. You know what? We're going to do a little checkmate here. We're going to go sign the reigning NLC Cy Young Award winner and Trevor Bauer and kind of put, put a little stamp on our ball club as defending champions to get ready to repeat. So, I think it's good for baseball, good for the division, and really good for both uh, fan bases. 
Jay Hare, you played over 16 seasons in the bigs, including in San Diego and in Los Angeles. Brooksy here played in San Diego. Let me ask you this. What's the biggest difference between, as a player, playing in San Diego and playing for the Los Angeles Dodgers? Ooh, um, Obviously, it's different know, now, too, than it was. It is I will say that I loved my time in San Diego. I lived in La Jolla. I lived right by the beach. It was so chill, so relaxed. It was more like a surfer type of town to me. You know what I'm saying? The fans were great. It was just really laid back, and I enjoyed it. We won 90 games that year. We were a game away from the playoffs. The fans were awesome. Nobody expected us to do anything. So uh, I, I loved playing there. You know, in fact, I wanted to re-sign there. You know, uh, but it just didn't work out. Uh, playing for the Dodgers, it's awesome. It's more of an East Coast vibe with that Hollywood feel. You know what I'm saying? Yes, it's laid back. It's chill. But then you still have the star power. You have George Lopez, Arsenio Hall, you know what I'm saying, checking out your games. Chris Rock would come down from New York and, and check out a Dodger game. It's more star-studded in the fans, uh, in, in the arena with the fans. So uh, I loved playing for both cities. I love playing West Coast baseball. I think it's cool. It's chill. Uh, but the Dodgers obviously have a, a, a tremendous history. Uh, and that's a little bit more uh, ho uh, Hollywood, I would say. And and with that history comes a pressure to win, right? Yeah. And it's not – I mean, it's a show. I love playing at Dodger Stadium. Yes, it is it, a show. It's a show, man. And I've explained how, like, the music is just different there. The fans are – the stadium's on top of you. You feel the music on the ground. It's, it's nuts. But it's a show, but they still need you to win. And yes, that history is what fire. creates that fire for the players. Uh, you know, when you're walking through the hallways and seeing all the gold gloves and the trophies and, and all that, you're like, Ooh, wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> this is all that's been done inside the stadium. I need to get together. <laughs> so that, you know, that's fun. A it's a good, it's a really cool place to play. It is a great place to play. And you know what? The winning thing, I think with the Padres, when I was there that one year, we weren't expecting to do anything, but we had a great season. Um, and they don't have the history of the titles that the Dodgers have. When I got, when I signed with the Dodgers, we were expected to win. You know what I'm saying? And in 13, went to the playoffs. It just didn't work out for us in that postseason. But we were star studded in 13. We had Matt Kemp, Andre Ethier, Clayton Kershaw, Zach Grinke, young Yasiel Pui. Uh, incredible team in 13. I thought we should have went further than we did, but it just didn't happen. You would have got beat in the World Series anyways. I don't – uh, I can't say that. I can't talk trash. We didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, I've never felt so unaccomplished than on this conversation. We got Brooksy <laughs> with the World Series ring. We got Jay Hare with the World Series ring, too. And I'm sitting here with my college jersey and my, my – <laughs> very proud of this college medal behind me. Hey, you're the brains, man. You're the brains. It's fine. Somebody's got to do it. Yeah. Let's talk about Tatis a little bit because you guys talk about pressure and playing with pressure. This kid, 22-year-old kid, gets handed this 14-year monster contract. Now he's dealing with shoulder issues. Now he's not hitting the ball. And now he's not doing it in the field. And it's got to weigh on him. He had that much pressure at 22 years old, that much money invested. He's already made more errors this season than he did all of last season. He's hitting below the Mendoza line at the plate. He's striking out at a career-high clip. Granted, career-high has only played less than 162 games. But it's got to be tough to be playing through injury. Not only that, with that much pressure. You think he's pressing a little bit, Brooksy? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, even it, even if you're not making that amount of money, if you were a player like me making league minimum and you're hitting That's 154 pressure. to start the season, <laughs> yeah, right? Even if you're, if you're hitting – you're not one of the big guys on the team. You're playing every day and you're hitting 154, you're pressing. Now you throw that contract on there and, and the expectations to carry that team, which he needs to realize he doesn't need to carry that team. They're loaded. They're a good team. They're playing terrible right now. They've lost seven to ten, three in a row, whatever it may be, something like that. They're playing bad right now, but they're a good team. They're a loaded lineup. They got good pitching. He doesn't have to do it all. He just needs to be him. He's not. He's not having fun right now. It's not fun when you, when you're not playing well and you're worried about getting hurt, and you're hearing all these people say, "Oh, your shoulder's gonna pop out again." So he's don't tell me. Don't tell the media. Oh, I'm not thinking about it. It's good. I'm not thinking. You're thinking about it. You wouldn't you yeah. wouldn't be swinging finishing with two hands every swing if you weren't thinking about it. that's not your natural swing, so you're thinking about it. it it's on your head and it, it's carrying over to his defense. Seven errors and thirty seven attempts. That's 
that's yeah, not that's good. very uncharacteristic. Very, you know? yeah. Very, thing, and it, it's all going to clean up. He's going to relax. He's going to get to a point where he says, F it. Like, I'm okay. I'm a good player. Um, but he's, he's, he's 22. He's young. And so he, it's hard for him to get to that point. He's never failed in his life. Uh, so th- that's something you got to learn. And it's hard at the big league level. I was lucky enough to get – I'd never failed my life, and I got to the lower minor leagues and got my ass kicked for a couple of years. So I got to learn in the minor leagues how to fail. Yeah. He hasn't had that issue yet, and now he's he's getting his first taste of it right now, and it's in the big leagues, and he has not only the San Diego Padres fans' eyes on him, but all of the baseball world on him right now because he is being thrown around as the new face of the baseball. So everyone's expecting him to hit 350 with 40 this year, and he expects it as well. He probably expects more, honestly. So he should hit the pressure is there, and it, it's going to clean up, and he's going to relax, and he, he's going to get back to who he is. Yeah, I think, you know, anytime you're injured, you know, it's not just playing with pain. He's injured. He's got a yeah. tear in, in that left uh, shoulder. I don't know if it's – I heard it's the labrum. Right. If it is the labrum, I had the exact same injury, uh, and it bothered me. And it bothered me so, so much so that I had to have surgery. I had surgery during the season, and I was able to come back um, about three and a half months after and finish the season – um non so, throwing shoulder non throwing shoulder same thing i had um, it in throwing shoulder but yeah so you know for people forget your lead shoulder even though you're not throwing with it your lead shoulder guides your swing oh, yeah. you know what i'm saying and he likes to finish high releasing the barrel and he can't do that anymore so that's not his, the swings he's taking you know it's okay to swing two hands some guys do it you know mookie betts does it mike trout does it those are their natural swing he has a high finish he likes to let go of that bat so it's very unnatural for him. So he's going to struggle a little bit, you know, and then maybe in the back of his mind, man, if I really let it go, if I really want to swing the way I want to, does it pop out again? It's popped out three times in in less than what, two months. So it has to be in the back of his mind. And I'm sure defensively it's not comfortable for him trying to set his sights when he's throwing across the diamond. Maybe he's trying to baby it and trying to make sure he doesn't uh, overuse it to wear to, to have wear and tear uh so anything anytime you have an injury that's in the back of your mind constantly it's gonna affect your play man it, it just is and it's just you hate to see it because he's such a talented player uh and he's such a a, a player that you know he's at the forefront of the big leagues where everybody wants to see him play and per, see him play and perform at a high clip uh hopefully he'll figure it out as, as, as far as how to play with it uh, but this is something he's just going to have to deal with if he continues to play with. And Jerry, I think you can speak on this too. There's plenty of times when you're struggling at the plate, you take it out on defense with you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So that's like, I learned as I out as there I, thinking about, is it bad? And then, oh, there's a ball hits my left. I got to make a play. When you're not all there as a shortstop or a third baseman, I know if I wasn't all there at third base and I had a ball smoked at me, my reaction time's not there because I'm thinking about the wrong thing. So that could be playing into it. I think it's it's a combination of things and it's just – it's just got to run its course right now. Let's get into this actual series a little bit more. So pitching matchups, we're basically going to run it back from the last series. So it's going to be Ryan Weathers with Walker Bueller, game one. You Darvish, Kershaw, game two. Snell, Bauer, game three. The only difference between the last series pitching matchup and this series is going to be an added fourth game. So you're going to have Joe Musgrove, Dustin May. Jay Hare, who? there's a lot of unsung heroes with L.A., Who's like the best Dodger that nobody talks about? Because everybody talks Urias. about Suzuki. Urias. Urias. That's exactly what I was going to say. Guys, this kid, if he continues to throw the way he did this last start, he might be our best pitcher. I think of what, what, how, what I'm saying, okay? Clayton Kershaw, the greatest pitcher of this generation. Mm-hmm. Trevor Bauer, the reigning Cy Young Award winner, Okay. Of the National League, he's really in his prime now. And Walker Bueller, who is an absolute stud. But what Julio Urias does is he tops at tops out around 97, 98 miles an hour. He's got a, a, a de- deceitful delivery to the hitter. He is tough on left-handed hitters, and righties have a hard time picking up the ball. So when he's face them, oh well, you, well you would know that you know yeah. when when he's throwing strikes and now has that. Dirty slider, bruh, he's going to be tough to deal with. And he ain't a f- either. 
No. Even though he's been in the biggies for five, six years, he's still young. Yeah. He's like 23, 24 years old. You know what I'm saying? So he hasn't even entered his prime yet. So that is the best kept secret, even though he closed out the World Series last year. The guys that I hear that have faced him, they go, dude, this guy is curious, man. I don't like facing him. I go, no, I he would, hides I would, a ball like, really well. He hides the ball. a ball. So when I faced him, he was in Oklahoma City. So he was super young. It was before he really got on the scene. He had just got called up to AAA. I, had, I knew nothing about him. Nobody knew anything about him. He was a prospect. That's all we knew. Um, and he wasn't throwing that hard. He was throwing like 93, 94. Which, I mean, still good for a lefty, especially in, like, 2017. I think it was 2017, 16 maybe. Regardless, he just hit his spots. And he's a kid, and he pitched in well, which a lot of lefties, young lefties, didn't do well. And they didn't – you didn't see it much. They would two-seam away, change up away, back foot, breaking ball. That's your typical lefty, especially in AAA. He was buzzing you with, with 94 in to get to the change up away. And he could he could throw strikes in, too. So the command was there, but I just thought always thought he hid the ball well. That just kind of he crunched up with the ball and then stay closed super long. Yeah. And you just couldn't pick it up till late, which made it play up even more. But the do- the best thing the Dodgers did was let him pitch in big situations in the postseason. Yeah, because absolutely. all that's gonna do is give him more confidence and know that there's no moment too big. And he's been there, he's done it at the biggest spots. So a regular season game, a regular season start, it's nothing. It's nothing yeah. to him. He's been there that and he is young. So this is He's got a lot of good innings and in years ahead of him. You're yeah, exactly only, right. He's only 24, so he can right. buy a beer, but only buy wow. a couple years. But <laughs> Jerry, who was your most uncomfortable uncomfortable at bat when you were playing? Uh, easy, Roy Halladay. Oh my mm. God, Rest what a nice. Uh, just a guy that sunk it, ran it, cut it. I remember he threw me six straight split fingers. <laughs> Six. In and row. you're up there looking for the sinker. <laughs> Bro, I remember I was struggling. It was I was like, I started the year two for 20. I was with the Nationals. I was, you know, the guy, you know, uh, off the bench on that, on that ball club early. And then Zim got hurt. And then I got some burn. And then I got red hot, you know. But I remember Zim got hurt pretty bad. And then the next day he goes, you're in. You're going to be playing third base for a while. And my first start was uh, Roy Halladay. And I remember I, I had some struggles with him in the past, but I, I don't punk out on anybody. I, I'll, I'll go after everybody, you know, and I'm going to fight. And I just remember it was an ESPN game. He had, you know, I popped up and then he struck out uh, my second at bat. I remember the third at bat, I go, I'm going to get this dude. I'm going to get him. Split, split, split. Mm-hmm. I foul some, foul, I go, he's got to throw me a fastball or a curveball or something. Split, split. <laughs> Finally, he threw a nasty split. I swear to this day, it looked like a fastball. It was at like 92, and it just darted out of the zone. I just remember I could feel the, the ESPN cameras in my face because I ended the inning. I had, to, I had to crawl back to third base. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Somebody had to go retrieve my, my glove for me. And I just remember going, dude, I'm getting embarrassed on national TV by one of the best pitchers <laughs> that has ever lived. Oh. But I'll tell you what, he, uh, he was something else, man. And he, he can beat you in it, in it with the curveball, the slider, two-seamer, cutter, uh, or the split. He was tough to deal with. I had a couple of spring training at-bats against him, but never never in the, in the regular season. And he blew me up twice. I, he didn't strike me out, but that's because I, if I, anything close early, I was like, man, I'm swinging. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was a kid, like young spring training, in spring training, yeah. getting some at-bats. And I was like, oh, my God, that's Roy Holiday. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I got saw, oh man, that's middle. I swung and it was off my pine tar. You know, that, <laughs> that sink was late. And I knew it was coming and I still couldn't suck my hands in enough to get to it. But for me, the toughest guy I ever faced was Scherzer. Yeah. Scherzer, man. I, I probably have 35 of bats against him and maybe three hits. Wow. Right. Maybe three. I mean, that's a, it's, that's a rough estimate. One of them was a go ahead in like the bottom of the eighth though. Hey, so hey. It, was a, it was a big one. At Ooh, least. But, Man, he owned me. Was- Him and Jerry, Jeremy Hellickson, man. Hellickson wasn't that, like super nasty, but he could literally look on the mount, look at me and go, change up. <laughs> and I would go, all right. And I still swing and miss at that <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you a story about Roy Halley. I'm with the Yankees in, in 09. So we're in Toronto. This is when he was the Blue Jays. So he's just, I mean, dealing. Now, we had an incredible lineup in 09. We had Teixeira, Jeep, 
uh, A Rod, uh, just Johnny Damon, just a deep, deep lineup. Posada, we just had a great offensive ball club. And I remember sitting, remember sitting on the top step in, in Sky Dome, you know, because I'm not playing that day. And he's just mowing through our lineup. Jeet struck out his first step back. His uh, second at bat, he strikes out again. You know what I'm saying? So he comes over to me, he goes, bro, next step back, I'm going to hit a rope over the second base with his head. You know, I'm, I'm going to sit on the first pitch fastball, whatever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lace it for a double. It's like, go get him. Go get him, right? Next step back, he gets up there. First pitch swing, he hits a little tapper. <laughs> Maybe like 10 feet. And uh, Roy picks it up, throws it first. So Jeet's coming over here. You know, he's getting ready to come back in the dugout. I look at him, he passes me, he goes, not a word, bro, not a word. I'm not going to say exactly what he I'm not going to say exactly what he said. But he said, not a word. I was like, hey, at least you, at least you hit the ball this time, you know. That's how nasty he was, man. He threw like a one one or two hitter. I think it was a one hitter. But it was like and a that, I guess that ball. lineup, we too? Have, we should have we got no hit that night. I mean, he was just dominant that night. Amazing. Oh. Doc, man, that's crazy. I guess Jeter, Hall of Fame, that's amazing. All right, let's – we've already gone off our rockers and we're like 20, 30 minutes in. We kind of expect it. But <laughs> totally this do. Dodgers, Dodgers, Padres, we're going to go around the diamond. This is going to be quick hitting, rapid fire. We're going to go around the diamond. Who would you rather have? Because we talked last week hmm. about who has the better lineup. And Brooksy and Alana Rizzo both agreed that the Dodgers have the better lineup as it stands right now. We're going to go one by one through each position. And we're going to pick and choose. I'm going to ask Brooksy and Jay Hare who they would rather have. And this, of course, is assuming all the players are healthy. Like, for example, we'll talk about Belly. This is assuming he's healthy. So, number one, let's start at catcher. Who would you rather have, Will Smith or Austin Nola? Jay okay, Hare. Jay. Jay, Will first. Smith. Will Smith. Yeah, I agree Will Smith. He's done it in the big games, too, for him. I liked him in the postseason. Yeah, and Caratini's there for San Diego, too. Austin Nola is, is injured. Don't course. forget about Austin Barnes, either, man. Austin Barnes does a great yeah. job, too, man. Of course. Of course. He does a great job. Teams nowadays always have the two catcher platoons anyways. But let's go over to first base. Eric Hosmer or Max Muncy? Jay Hare. Defensively, Hosmer. Offensively, Muncy. Okay. I don't want to say same, but, yeah, I love Muncy in the box, man. He he uh, He's one of those guys that really doesn't give in. Like, he doesn't. He's, I feel like he's fearless, and not because of the whole Bumgarner thing, like go get out of the ocean, which was amazing. <laughs> I just feel like he, uh, there's an, like a quiet confidence about him in the in the box that I really like with Mun Muncie. I'll go Muncie. Second base, tough right now because Gavin Lux is injured, so you could kind of place Chris Taylor in that role. So we'll say Chris Taylor or Jake Cronenberg. I'm going CT3. Uh, he's been a valuable piece for the Dodgers. You play him anywhere. Hit him lead off, hit him third or fifth. I'm going Chris Taylor. This, this was a tough one for me. I like Cronenworth a lot. I think, man, that's tough. I like the pop. I like the pop. I like the what he, what he brings to the plate. But, yeah, I, I got to go Chris Taylor too. Yeah, you can make the case we're comparing apples and oranges. And yeah. Established hitters versus young. Exactly. That's, that's what it is, yeah. Let's move over to third. Maybe the Padres can get some points on the board here. Uh, Machado or JT? Who do I want on my team? Who do I want on my team? Give me the red dream, brother. Give me oh, Justin all right. Turner. All right. I'm JT, I know he's I'm a, I mean, I'm a huge Justin Turner fan. I agree. But all just, for, just for the sake of argument, I, I like the way Machado's swinging the bat right now. So right now, this this series right now, I'll take Machado. He's like leading the league in exit velo and all that right now, so. I, I'm gonna go with Machado for this series. Jay, are you going JT, baby? Absolutely, brother. If I got help us, if I had to pick a guy big in the big games, I want him at the plate when the game's on the line. Give me JT. Yeah, okay. that's I. I strictly pick Machado for this series. If I had to pick a guy to be on my team for the whole season, it's just JT. I mean, he's a leader, man. He's a guy you want on your in your corner. Let me stop getting Dodgers people on this freaking podcast. <laughs> Tatis or Seager? Jay Harris. Oh, this is easy for me. Corey Seager. Easy. I think Corey Seager is the best shortstop in, in baseball. Uh, he's the West Coast Kyle Ripken. Uh, incredible swing. And we talk about clutch. He's the reigning NLCS MVP and World Series MVP. Easy. Hey, who did I uh, – Danny, who did I pick to win NL MVP this year? Uh, his name starts with Corey and ends with Seager. Yeah. You know my answer. I'm a big Seager guy. Another quiet confidence guy. I love – 
he hit that homer in the 12th inning uh, in game one, and you saw him. He didn't do anything around the bases. He drops his bat and runs, whatever. But you could, on his way back to the dugout to his teammate, you could see yeah. him mouthing and getting fired up. Don't Guys, get Seager fired up, boy. I'm telling you. I, I, played, I love me some Seager. I, I played with Cal Ripken. I mean, they're mirror images of each other. Right. Same personality, that quiet confidence. Don't don't get him riled up. That's Cal right there. That's right. Rip. He's my favorite Very player, so- bro. Very similar. Cal and, and Corey Seager, they are very, very similar. I like that comp. All right, let's switch out to the outfield. Tommy Pham, AJ Pollock. I'm a huge Tommy Pham fan. I know he's off to a rough start right now, but I'm going AJ Pollock. Uh, AJ Pollock has had a really good uh, – he had a really good year last year. Uh, I think it was second on the team in home runs, so I'm going AJ Pollock. But Tom, Tommy Pham's a really good player, just off to a rough start. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'll go Tommy Fam. I know, I know he's off to a rough start, but I, I like what he brings to the to the party every night. There's that intensity there. He plays. He plays. He, even though he's struggling, he plays his ass off. He plays. He hard, plays man. hard, man. I like that about him. I'm gonna go Fam. What up, Come Fam? On. Sorry. Come on, Trent Grisham, Cody Bellinger. I have a feeling I know where this is going to go. Right, this is this is easy. You know, Cody Bellinger. I don't care what anybody says. He's the best defensive center fielder in baseball. I know Grisham won the Gold Glove. He's not a better defender than Cody Bellinger. No disrespect to, to Grisham, but I think everybody knows Cody Bellinger. The way he way he goes back on balls, mm-hmm. his range in the outfield, robbing home runs. He robbed Tatis's home run uh, in the NLCS, or excuse me, in the NLDS. Uh, just incredible defender, and obviously the pop with Cody Bellinger. I'm going Cody. Yeah, I agree. Belly's an MVP candidate every year when he's healthy. Um, yeah, I got to go Belly. Last one. I have a feeling I know where this one's going. Mookie Bet, <laughs> one of the best players in the game versus Will Myers. So I asked my dad, uh, does Mookie best remind you of anybody? And he said, let me watch him for a little bit. And he came back a week later and he said, Willie Mays. Dude, you know, I knew uh, you were going to say my that. Dad, my dad grew up, uh, his hero was Willie Mays. Loved watching him play. And he said, Mookie Betts reminds him of Willie Mays. The speed, his throwing arm, the accuracy. Even though he plays right field, he plays right field like a center fielder. Uh, the, the way he runs the bases, uh, electric on the base pass. And Willie Mays had that wiry, sh- strong body. You know, mm-hmm. Willie Mays was, you know, 5'11", 6 feet. Mookie Betts, 5'10", 5'11". Wiry strength, has incredible power. Uh, Mookie Betts is the best right fielder in all of baseball. Couldn't agree more, man. And I, and I just, man, I got, I know Mookie. I played with Mookie. Um, this shouldn't have anything to do with it, but the human being that Mookie bets is as well pushes it over the edge even more for me. Like yeah. he's so involved in the community and giving back, and he can bowl a 300 game and he can beat you in <laughs> golf. He, dude, he's one of those guys that literally anything he does, he will whoop your ass. Yeah. And, he, and if he doesn't, he's going to practice it until he can. I just – I'm a – man, I love Mookie Betts. Mike you know. Trout is, you know, still the best player in, in baseball. You know, he's off to an incredible start. Oh, Mookie man. is right there with him. And, and as far as overall athlete, I, I say this, Mike Trout and Mookie Betts are the best athletes in the world, in my opinion. They can do everything. everything. Mike Trout, literally flat-footed, jump up, dunk a basketball. Mookie yeah. Betts, reverse dunk a basketball. You talk about his bowling. Mookie Betts, I got ticked that he went to D.C. Ranch and shot a 79, never played that course. Are you kidding me? That's How a tough course. I played, played that course, course as well. It's not an easy course. It's not an easy course. <laughs> you don't know where you're going. You still shoot a 79? That just drove me crazy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he can do – you know, you know, LeBron is an incredible athlete. LeBron's older now. You know what I'm saying? And there are other basketball players that are great athletes. Football, But these guys can do everything. You ask them to play football, I'll go, they'll go catch it or, or, or score a touchdown. You know what I'm saying? They could throw a ball. The baseball players, especially elite athletic baseball players, can do everything. Everything. And Mookie Betts is at the top of the list. Yeah, that whole idea of baseball players being unathletic, it's a myth now. If you don't believe it by now, well, you're a pitcher. Never Danny, be so. What? You're a pitcher, though, so just stay out of this. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> hey, hey, on a side note, the, there's only one thing in this world Mookie Betts can't do. Can you name it, Jerry? Pitch. Eat dairy. Grow a beard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I, 
<laughs> we're not allowed to see the players right now, but I tell you what, what if I ever interview him via Zoom, like after a game, I'll make tell, sure. You, tell him I said that. I will <laughs> after say, I'll get a text. Like, come on, sure. Brooksy. You can ask. You can ask. You can ask uh, Mookie this. Were you there in eighteen? Uh, no, no, no. I uh, I was there. Uh, I was in Boston 12, 13, 14. 14, okay. So, so he came up at the very end of 14. Very end. So I, I, I think it was 2018. Anyway, um, I go down to visit the Red Sox, you know, and listen, the reason why I was with the Dodgers, go down to visit, because for only one reason, I was friends with Pedroia. You know, we we trained together. I've known him since he was at ASU. So I get to in the Red Sox club. I said, Jay, what are you, what's up, man? He thinks I'm there to see him, which I want to say hi to Dustin, too, because I always love Dustin. But the reason why I came down there, I wanted to go meet my favorite player. I've been watching Mookie Betts play. That's what I envisioned how I would play. But it didn't it didn't work out that way. I was not I wasn't as talented. But that's how I wanted to play the game of baseball, the way Mookie Betts played the game of baseball. So I went down and I introduced myself. Chris Young was on that team. Talked to those guys. Hey, I really want to meet Mookie Betts. You know, he was in the cage at the time. So I waited. And I got a chance to meet, meet Mookie Betts. Hey, I just want to, I'm Jerry Harrison Jr. I know you know who I am, but uh, you don't know who I am. But I, I want to I, I uh, introduce myself. You're my favorite player, man. I love the way you play. Mm-hmm. I know I'm on the West Coast, but I make sure I watch your bats. And he goes, oh, thanks, man. He was really nice, very genuine. You know what I'm saying? And then now he's over with the Dodgers. So when we traded for him, I was ecstatic. And to see him play every single day, he's even better than I thought. Hey, wait till you can see him put his work in. Oh, this man. kid works, man. He's not a kid anymore. This man works. Yeah. Everything he has and everything he can do is because he works his ass off. And it's behind the scenes. He's not posting videos of it. He's not putting it out there for the world. It's behind closed doors, and he gets after it. Yeah, I believe He's not it. blessed with the, the body. Yeah. You see him walking down the street, you don't know he's a professional athlete. Yeah. He, he, but he's blessed with that great hand-eye coordination and a work ethic better than anybody that I've ever been around. Yeah. Each Amazing. team, Padres, Dodgers, has to nominate two players to fight in a ring. <laughs> Rookie, you're going to represent the Padres. You have to pick two Padres to represent the Padres. All right. Hey, here, you're our Dodger expert here. You got to pick two Dodgers to represent the Dodgers in the ring in battle. Brooksy, start with you. Who are your two Padres? Nah, Jerry, go first. You go first, Jerry. I'm, th- I'm oh. still thinking. So. Okay. I'm going number one, Bruce Jar Gratterall. Bruce okay. Arguero, he, is, he just uh, looks angry. Yeah. He's, his nickname is the Bazooka, but they also call him the Buffalo. He's huge. Yeah. Like he's 6'5, six, 6'6. Six, six. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. Probably 275, 280, just pure muscle. Okay. It looks he's like too, a, he's that heavy. He doesn't look that, that heavy. heavy. Oh my huge, God. bro. Huge. Okay. And then this, this is the guy. I'm going with the guy who would never give up in a fight. He knows how to fight a little bit and scrap. Austin Barnes. Let me tell you some boys. He'd be a tough out in the fight, bro. He'd be a tough out. You don't want to mess with, with, with Austin Barnes, man. Those are my two guys. All right. I got a man. There's a guy I play with in Texas. I only need one guy. I don't need to. I, I think he can take on both. I, I don't know if he would win, but he would, he would take on both. Keone Kila. Dude is nuts. <laughs> He's on the and I mean that right with now. all due respect, Mr. Yeah. Keela, don't murder me. He's, on he's the got like right prison tats. He's got scars. And I don't know his history, but I, I don't even want to know, honestly. But I would not. He's the guy in the fight. I'm sure you played against Farnsworth, right? Oh, Farnsworth. I, oh, uh, are we, I, I thought we were going on the Dodgers. I, you're going all time? No, 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 no. I, no, I, I'm saying I'm, I'm comparing him in a way. So there's always that one guy on the team that you're aware of when bench is clear because he's in the back, like just staring, hunting, like hunting. waiting, hunting, right? Hunting. Yeah. And that's, that's Keela. That's Keela. He's, he's about it. I, I don't know if he needs to be about it, but he's about it all the time. And he's always ready to throw down, which is kind yeah. of an issue, but that's my guy. And I don't need, need anyone else. Cause he's going to, and he's going to, it's going to be dirty. He's probably going to, he's probably got a couple shanks in his glove. I don't know. <laughs> I love him. I played with them. I enjoyed them, but I'm not messing with that man. Nobody's no. going with Kenley? Big Kenley? No, he's Kenley, nice. Kenley, Kenley's a big teddy bear. Yeah, but he's so big, man. He he's can't huge. Him, man. I love Kenley. He's like my little brother. He's huge. You can't get in tight. He'll, if he wraps you up, it's over. Yeah. It's like a bow constrictor. 
So who are you going with with the with the with the Padres? Keone Kila. All right. He's got that Farnsworth in him. Bro, he's nuts. That's that that, that Farnsy bro. You, that's one cat old school. I wouldn't mess with either. No, you no, start- no. Hey, you know he's in my book. I clipped him. Did you really? Yeah, he was at the tail end of a solid. You're at the tail end of your career, I'm gonna get that ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mariano. Pettit, all these guys in their last year. Hey, man, when you're limping to the finish line, I'm coming for you. <laughs> hey, that's all right. That's all right. This is the craziest teammate you were ever uh, teammates with, Jay. Here. The craziest? Who, who would you want by your side in a brawl? In a brawl? See, a lot of, here, here's the thing. I'm glad you said brawl. Hmm. Like An actual street I, fight? I, or? I, I, I can fight. If, I, if I'm in a fight, I know how to defend myself. Okay? That's a fight. Man to man. A brawl is anything can happen. You can get hit in the back of the head. You're looking at this dude, and then somebody comes tackling you from the back. You can blindside. So there's two guys I'd want in, in a brawl. Give me Yasuo Puig. Okay. I've playfully wrestled, fought him <laughs> numerous times. He's strong as an ox, man. And he doesn't, he doesn't give up on a fight, okay? Give me Puig. And I'm throwing an old school name out there. Um, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do three my top three, Puig, give me Vincent Padilla. Do you guys remember Padilla? The pitcher? bro, I play I played with him my rookie year. Yeah, I know for a fact there's he has to have murdered people and buried them somewhere. Bro, crazy. right? Nuts. Bro. Like I was scared to be in an elevator with about, him. I don't know about what you the, what the comment you just made. I don't know about that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but, I, I it wouldn't surprise me. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, I'm just saying like if 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 he's ha- if he has my back in a fight, I'm feeling very confident. Yes. Let's just say that, okay? I agree. I, and then I I'm can totally Kyle back Farns- that. I'm get- give me Kyle Farnsworth. Farnsworth's on my squad. Give me those three dudes, and I love. You know feeling, Johnny? Uh, do you know Johnny Gums? Of course, I know Johnny Gums. Bro, that's my boy. That's JG J five J five all day take, in my corner. You take, you take Johnny Gomes. I want to fight Johnny Gomes because he's my boy. I, I need to fight. <laughs> Bro, he's the best. He's the most like, like creative mind that's stuck in the body of just a Neanderthal. (laughs) Neanderthal. I can't speak. All right, he's like he's so smart and and creative, yet he'll literally eat your face off in a fight. But but, hold on a second. He's one of the nicest guys, though. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But if 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 he's one of the best teammates I ever had. 100%. 100%. He has your back. If, if, if let's say you go charge the mound, he'll beat you to the mound. You know that happened in Tampa. We, we, uh, what happened? I don't, Escobar laid down a bunt in a bad situation where he shouldn't have been bunting. Um, he gets to third base. Our dugout, David Ross is in our dugout chirping him. And, uh, and before Escobar could even, like as soon as he thought like to walk towards our, he was two steps towards our dugout, and Johnny was in left. He was already in between. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he would he anticipates fights, man. You remember the, uh, back when uh, the Red Sox, it was Shields versus Coco. Oh, I remember that Coco. Yes, Jay, look, go Coco, re-watch watch that. He leaned back on, yeah. Because <laughs> if 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 uh, James landed that, he would have. But yeah. Coco can fight, Pe- right? Yeah. Coco grew up boxing. His dad was like a, a, a coach, right. right? Yeah, so he knew how to box. Not that you got to do the scouting report there, James. Um, but go watch that fight on YouTube and find Johnny Gomes. He ends up on on top of someone just like hammer punching. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, great dude. Great teammate. Great teammate. Great teammate. Jay Hare, you're going to be on pre and post game live on Spectrum, Spectrum Sportsnet this weekend, right? Yes. Awesome. Yeah, Spectrum Sportsnet, yep. Awesome. Hey, special thank you to Jay Harrison over, was it 16, 17 uh, seasons in the big leagues? Uh, been an absolute pro the entire time, and we can't thank him enough for joining us on the Wake and Break pod. Make sure you go check him out on pre and post game live for expected sports this weekend. Thank you, Jay. Anytime, guys. Take care. Hey, Jerry, I'm going to start just calling you once a week so we can just talk about baseball. This <laughs> dude, is- hey, hit me up, dude. I love text me things, whatever. I, oh, up, I will. We got to play I'll golf, too. Yeah, let's play golf. Come out here, play golf. I don't want to play golf with you guys. You guys have put me to shame. I'm I'm embarrassed. Ah, It's all right. You can drive the cart. (laughs) All right, Jay. Thanks, brother. Take care.